Driverless cars said to be in our not so distant future, but are these vehicles equipped to handle real life scenarios that drivers often face and uh, decisions made in split seconds? A new research study in Science Magazine is taking a look at the ethics of driverless cars. Nick Thompson is going to take a look at it with me, the editor of NewYorker.com. So, Nick, yep. uh, first of all, what did researchers find in the study that they ran as it pertains specifically to the trolley problem? <laughs> okay, so there's uh, there are a whole bunch of ethical decisions that you have to build into the software of driverless cars, mm -hmm. right? And so one of them is something equivalent to the trolley problem, which is you see a trolley coming down the road, it's going to hit five people, or you can flip a switch and it'll hit one person. What do you do? And so sort of a classic philosophical conundrum. You can imagine a car having the same philosophical problem, right? It's about to hit five people, or it can swerve and hit one person, or it can hit a motorcycle, or it can hit a child, right? There are all sorts of variations on it. What people, what the researchers found in the recent study in Science Magazine mm -hmm. is that people want cars to be utilitarian. They want them to do the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Hit the one person, not the five. <laughs> but what they also found is they want their own car to protect them at all costs, which then sort of nullifies that theory. Right. Well, it, it, which really gets us to a much, the much bigger and broader idea that it, 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 it assumes that hitting five or hitting one, which is to say hitting pedestrians is something that yeah. we will constantly have to decide. I realize that you are about to disabuse me of the joys of driving and the fact <laughs> that and the legality of it in the near future, but at least it allows drivers of cars to mm -hmm. believe that they have their own fate in their hands. That in fact, if I pilot it and mm -hmm. make these decisions, I might not strike any pedestrians. I won't mm -hmm. have to face a trolley problem. Okay, so everything you said is completely wrong. So what- <laughs> That's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. I'm 100% Be off. Because what is most likely to happen yeah. with driverless cars is yeah. you'll dramatically reduce the number of situations where you'll be in this, right? Driverless cars, have some disadvantages. They have some disadvantages in our feeling of freedom. Perhaps mm -hmm. they'll cost more, but they will almost certainly be safer because they can see so much more. They can network with the other cars. They will know exactly how far away the side of the bridge is. So there will be far fewer accidents. There'll be far fewer, you know, situations like the one we're describing. However, we do need a way to get through them. So the situation where Josh is driving, you have many yes. more accidents. You may be very good, but the situation comes up a lot more. Driverless cars, the situation comes up a lot less frequently, but we don't know how to deal with so it. you're telling me we're going to get drivers out from behind those steering wheels in the near future. You, you, that's going to happen. <laughs> you're, you're talking to a kid raised in Southern California. You, you think uh, who saw singles and hey, the super train and driverless <laughs> cars who's seen every dystopian future movie there is to see and sci fi has nobody's driving. I get it. And everybody's version of the near future. But you think this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is a fait accompli. I think it is going to happen. I think I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of resistance at first. Driverless cars are going to come on the road. People are going to be frightened of them. They're going to be confused. They're going to not like the loss of control. But then they will be on the road. A certain number of people will have them in a certain number of situations. We will see that they are so much safer. And then people will say, wait a second. Do we really want real drivers on the road? I mean, think about drivers, right? You have a sense that the driver you've just described, a guy with the wind blowing in his hair, paying close attention. Like, yep. But a lot of drivers, they're drunk and they're texting, right? Driverless cars don't get drunk and they don't text, right? So the roads will be a lot safer. So once we have data showing that the roads are safer, once we get the humans out of the cars, right. then there'll be a lot of pressure to keep the humans out of the cars. So we're way down in the future when you can't drive. Probably you'll be able to drive for the rest of your life. Yeah. But I would imagine that there's gonna be a lot of political pressure to get drivers and their phones and their beer cans out of the driver's seat. Okay. And, um It'll make Mars a much safer place, actually. That's <laughs> You'll what be I, able to drive on Mars, no problem. That's Because there won't be anybody to be run over when you land See? there. <laughs> Martians everywhere rejoice. You'll be safe.